16. února v roce 1933 se narodil Ned Finkelstein. Umělec, fotograf, producent, velký bonviván a vzpomínků mu teď věnuje jeho někdejší souputník Phil Schoenfeld. Jak jsem potkal Nat- Nata Finkelsteina? Again. Jak jsem potkal Nata Finkelsteina? Poprvé jsem Nata potkal v New Yorku na jaře roku 1983. Hudební novinářka si byla, která psala pro East Village Eye, ho přivedla do našeho bytu na třetí ulici Avenue B. Byla to ona, kdo nás představil. Nad mi řekl, že hledá kapelu, kterou by produkoval a viděl nás rudé kmery rád v CBGBs. Jako starého radikála 60 let ho přitahovala politický provokativní pohová, po, povaha názvu kapelu. Stěný jako nás britský postpunkový zvuk. Nikdy předtím jsem o něm neslyšel, ale ukázalo se, že pracoval jako d- dokumentářní fotograf v faktory Andyho Warhola v letech 1964 až 1967. V faktory pracoval jako hlavní fotograf. Fotil v Velvet Underground, Boba Dylana, Nico, Idi Sedgwick, Salvadora Dalího, Marcela Dušampa a samotného Warhola. Ikonickou fotografii Andyho tváře zaramovanou tamborínou vyfotil právě nad. But at some point he'd fallen out with the factory people and had left the New York scene. He'd become a political activist and had got involved with the Black Panthers. A warrant was issued for his address because of an old drug bust, and for the next ten years Nat was on the run, living in India and the Middle East. When we met him in 1983, the legal charges against him had been dropped and he'd recently returned to New York from Bolivia, where he'd been living for several years. Nat was a real 60s underground guy, an artist but also an outlaw. As well as being a genius photographer, he'd become radicalized by America's war in Vietnam. He disagreed with the premise of the war, as did others of his generation, such as Timothy Leary, Allen Ginsberg and William Burroughs. Underground bands like The Doors and Jefferson Airplane also protested against the war. This is one of the reasons why Nat was attracted to our band. By the early 1980s, nobody was talking about the Vietnam War. Most Americans just wanted to forget it ever happened. Nat liked the idea that by using the name Khmer Rouge, we were drawing attention to a dark chapter in recent American history. In other words, he thought we were subversive, which appealed to his anarchistic instincts. So he started to manage us, but it was rather a case of mismanagement. I liked Nat a lot, but he was also a bit wild and crazy. Creative, but crazy. He was one of those original 60s guys, an artist outlaw who refused to accept imposed limits. For Nat, everything was possible. People like him don't exist anymore. Everything today is controlled, manipulated and marketed. And yeah, I gotta say he made a great video of our band. Track New Assassins for Khmer Rouge.
future, or is this the 